what is going on guys and welcome back to another video my name is jeremy and this is jeremy's wild world now as you saw for today's title today we're going to be rehousing once again my hogna karanensis now this time she's going to be in her permanent enclosure as she is an adult female if you haven't checked out my previous rehousing i'll leave a link to that video down in the description below absolutely fantastic video and this spider has been one i really really enjoy i hope to get my hands on some more in the future but nevertheless today we're going to be rehousing her i'm going to show you what setup i'm going to be putting her into and this is kind of like a broad general enclosure style that i would do for the majority of wolf spider species or like cosidae um so yeah hope you guys stick along and enjoy today's video and do be sure to stick to the very end because i will try to get her feeding and uh, stuff like that so hopefully i'll be able to get a takedown on camera and yeah so before we get into today's video guys i just want to quickly say that according to my youtube statistics a lot of you guys who watch my videos aren't subscribed so if you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell down below so you guys don't miss out on future content now without further ado let's start off today's video by showing you the wolf spider so to start off today's video guys i thought i'd show you the enclosure that the hogna carolinensis is currently in if you guys remember a while back i did do another rehousing video when she was a lot smaller and now she is an adult female i thought this enclosure is perfectly fine for her but i want to give her more space because uh lycosidae or wolf spiders in general do utilize space if provided um, they'll go wandering around at night time looking for food and stuff like that and i have seen it on multiple occasions during the night popping out of her burrow and having a little wander um unfortunately she is in her burrow but you can see her just there uh, but yeah, so you can see she's gotten a lot bigger than she was in the last video I made of her. She was probably about a third of the size she is now. And she's doing really, really well. And basically, I'm going to attempt to replicate uh, this setup into the uh, glass enclosure that I have ready for her. And I'll show you that in just a second. Um, but yeah, so let's just quickly talk about the stuff in here and how I'm going to change it in the enclosure. Of course, with the more space, um, substrate in here is a mix of topsoil and sand. Uh, but in the new enclosure, I'll be using my topsoil peat moss mix, uh, just to allow her to make a burrow a little bit better. Uh, supports um, and then have some more uh, sand that has like lots of rocks and stuff inside of it. And then I'm going to have some moss in the corner. I have lots of different kinds of moss from the Southeastern Arachnid Show. So I'm going to be utilizing that today. And then what I'll be doing is uh, including some more hides. So she used to use this little hide in the corner, but of course she's gone a lot bigger. So she doesn't go there now. She mainly stays on here. I will be reusing this cork bark uh, and then giving her another hide as an option as well. And just put some deco all around. So enough about that. Let's move on to me showing you what the enclosure I'm going to put her in. And we'll talk about the stuff inside of the enclosure as well. All right, so before I actually tear apart this enclosure, I wanted to actually try and uh, use the tarantula room rehousing tube that I picked up at Seas. Uh, to see if I can get her out and uh, see if this is any good for wolf spiders. Now, I'm not too sure how this is going to go down, if I'm completely honest, but I'm just going to pop the cork out and see if she will come out. Maybe pop it there. Just poke her from the hunt. There she is. Just like that, yeah, no, no, no. There we go. Perfect. And now that I've got her in the test tube, we can have, or rehousing tube, we can have her, a little look at her before we get her rehoused, as you can see right here. Just pop the enclosure out the way. Here she is, really, really big specimen. Um, no, she's not gravid, she's just had a few large meals recently. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't yet to get a male for her, so hopefully in the future I'll be able to get one. But check how beautiful she is. Look at those orange fangs. Stunning and grey coloration. I really, really love this species. One of my favourite lycosis to keep for sure. Um, but yeah, so fingers crossed um, I'll be able to find a male in the future. But if not, just owning her has been absolutely a great experience the past year and a bit. Um, and I'll definitely be getting some more if the spider shop or any other companies get them in in the future because I want to get them captive bred for sure. All right, so just so I don't want to keep her too long in the uh, rehousing tube. I don't want to stress her out too much. So let's move on to actually showing you the enclosure now and what's inside it. All right, so for the moment of truth, apologize if the clip is a little bit shaky. I have to do this handheld so I can show you guys the full depth of the enclosure. But let's have a little zoom out and see what I've come up with. Bum, 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 bum. here we go this is what i've decided to come up with for the hogna carolinensis guys now i hope you guys enjoy the look of it i definitely am really happy with how this enclosure turned out looks really really naturalistic um seeing as hogna carolinensis um from the us of course uh do live in scrubland areas i decided to go with a more like 
fallen down hillside. Unfortunately, I don't have any dry grasses, otherwise I would put like dry grass around the burrows. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, let's just talk about what's inside the enclosure. So substrate, as I did mention, was going to be the topsoil peat moss mix that I have along with some uh, sand that has larger bits and small, finer sand bits within the sand mix. So I've mixed that all together and I've also sprinkled some on top. You can see the larger pebbles where uh, they've just sat on the top look more obvious and then I've got like this stuff here this is like the clay stuff that I collected um, last year uh, during the summer it looks fantastic and then of course I've utilized um, some mosses so this is the moss I got from Hermania and then I've got some reindeer moss here in the corner or reindeer, reindeer lichen and then what I've done is I popped her water bowl next to the lichen so whilst I'm um, spraying down the lichen to keep it hydrated i can also fill up the water bowl at the same time and that's just where like a little area of humidity uh, she can utilize as well and i put moss on both sides because i've given her two options for burrows this time and uh, you can see right here this cork bark piece does have a little hollow entrance as well as the cork bark that i used in her previous enclosure so i want to give her both some humidity uh, down below so in case she wants to have a little bit more humid and then uh, depending on what side um she decides to make her little web tunnel in i will obviously be spraying the moss a little bit more often than the other side uh, just to ensure that she has a little bit of humidity and then if she doesn't want too much she can move to the other side etc etc and then of course cork bark pieces i've uh, just put some extra bits of cork bark inside just to you know make it a little bit more stand out i would love to get some sticks and stuff but i uh, haven't had time to go out and collect some sticks uh, but nevertheless, I think this enclosure looks absolutely fantastic and of course it's very very spacious in comparison to the previous enclosure so hopefully I'll be seeing her wander around at night and you know looking for prey and uh, hopefully what the plan is is once she settles in and uh, maybe she loses a little bit of weight and does a little bit of a, a poo because <laughs> she has had a meal recently um, I'll give her a little fe another feeding within this enclosure and hopefully I'll get a really nice takedown um, as you saw in my feeding tips video, she had a really, really nice takedown then. So hopefully I can get a nice takedown with her in this enclosure. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much me showing off the enclosure. Uh, the female's been in the test, uh, the rehousing tube long enough. I keep saying test tube, not used to it. <laughs> It'll stick eventually, guys. I apologize for that. Uh, but yeah, so she's been in the rehousing tube. So let's just get her quickly rehoused into the enclosure. And finally, we can now move on to the rehousing part of today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I really do enjoy making these enclosures. You know, one thing I love about the hobby the most is definitely getting the enclosures put together and making them look as naturalistic as possible, whether it's a breeding tub or a display enclosure like today. Um, but nevertheless, it's such a really, really nice thing to do. And, you know, to see these animals replicate naturalistic behaviors in captivity is something that I really do enjoy. But let's just get one last look at this female in the uh, rehousing tube. <laughs> Um, not test tube Jeremy uh, but yeah so let's just take one last look at her inside here before she probably goes and hides straight away absolutely gorgeous and you can tell she's pretty thick at the moment may drop a phantom egg sack I'm not 100% sure because she is a mature female now and a good sized one too so since she is on this side what I'm going to do is just wiggle this open like so and just pop her down just like that and her ball. there we go oh she's a little angry look at that <laughs> sticking her legs out a little bit grumpy eh but no worries you're in your enclosure now and hopefully she recognizes her little tube and starts making some lovely webs in here and yeah so if i don't manage to get a feeding clip video uh, for the end of today's video guys that is pretty much the end of it i hope you guys have enjoyed today's video and let's get into the outro
So that's the end of today's video, guys. What do you think? Had a really, really good time setting up this enclosure, and I hope you guys like it too. Do let me know if there's anything that you would like to change with this enclosure if you were to set up an enclosure for a wolf spider. But for me in general, we really like host today. This is pretty much a bog standard setup. And as you saw from that clip of her digging out the tunnel, she's practically stayed on the right hand side. Um, I'm doing this outro a couple months later after setting this enclosure up just to update you guys. And yeah, she's pretty much staying on that side. She hasn't decided to move. So whether I should have put that piece of cork back in, never mind. I did give her the option. And that's one thing I would recommend as well for your wolf spiders, guys. Definitely give them the space because they will use it. You will be able to see them at nighttime patrolling their territory looking for prey. And I don't think I'm going to be feeding her again anytime soon. She's very, very chunky. Unfortunately, no males here, but she will be living out the rest of her days with me in that very spacious and lovely looking enclosure. So that is the end of today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you would click that subscribe button as well as the notification bell down below so you guys don't miss out on future content. I'd also really appreciate it if you guys would follow me on Instagram, Jamie's World World underscore as well as Jamie's World World dot sales. I'm really active on Instagram, posting pictures and videos and animals and inverts I keep when I don't upload on YouTube. Ooh. And I'd also really appreciate if you guys would follow me on Facebook, Jeremy's Wild World. I'll leave the link for that down in the description below. My business page I'm trying to set up, it's trying to specialise in the true spiders. So if you guys in the UK are interested in that, be sure to follow me on there for all updates on my breeding projects as well as just stuff behind the scenes and videos and stuff like that. And yeah, so that's all for me today, guys. Leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.